It's kind of amazing to me when you have sites like Playboy playing with identity politics with woke agendas, and it's really, really cringy and just comes off <laughs> in a very disturbing uh, way. So we have here an article from Game of Thrones, or from uh, Playboy talking about Game of Thrones, and it says, Game of Thrones and criticism of a sexist season. So apparently there's a lot of people that are saying that this season is sexist, and I don't really understand where they're pulling that from. There's nothing in this show that has really deemed it sexist. I mean, you realize that Arya was the one that ended up killing the Night King, right? That was like the the, the highlight of the show up to this point. The the highlight of the season at least. So, um, you know, what how 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 is this sexist? I, I don't understand. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what Playboy, who is obviously a, a company that is very um, very experienced, very knowledgeable, very professional about what the difference between sexist and not sexist is. We're going to go ahead and see what they're going to say about this. So it says, are we so elitist as a society that we think just because an episode of TV does not play out the way that we would have written it, it is a bad episode of TV? And are we so fickle as a society? Man, deep thoughts by Playboy are just the best. <laughs> deep thoughts with Playboy. There you go. That could be a new column for, for the website. Um, are we so, uh, let's see, uh, are we so fickle as a society that we think it is, if the episode isn't to our liking, it's okay to throw around terms like sexist and disgusting. The penultimate episode of Game of Thrones was incredibly div divisive. Half of the people seemed to love it, the other half hated it, and absolutely nobody saw it coming. Whichever way you are on, however, there is a respectful way, way to be there. And then there is the garbage we're seeing on Twitter. Uh... <laughs> Oh man, it, it gets it gets even worse. Uh, let's see, is this okay? Let me be clear: it is okay to dislike any episode of television, but to dislike it and to feel personally wronged by it are two different things. Disliking something means it simply didn't work for you. Feeling wronged implies you are being personally attacked. There are three people who get to feel wronged right now, and those people are executive producers David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, and author George R. R. Martin. By the way, guess what? The people they've wrong been wronged by are us, the fans. Sidetracking for a moment, we need to create a new word for fans who act like bullies. They're not fans because all they do is spread negativity, but they are not trolls because they actually view the content. But I digress. Well, I appreciate them at least uh, kind of thinking through this a little bit. Basically, they're, they're talking about people who uh, didn't like the show. Like, uh, or they don't like the season so far, or the episode, or whatever. Um, people like, people like Jeremy, um, you know, people, people like, uh, Doomcock, people like that, who, who haven't really been a fan of this, uh, season up to this point. They are bullies, apparently. Bullies. They're not trolls anymore. You remember when everyone was calling us trolls during the Captain Marvel era, <laughs> where, uh, they would basically call us trolls because we had, uh, we had critical thoughts about, um, about Breed Larson. We had, basically critical we were using critical thinking and you can't do that if you do that then you're a troll well apparently we're not troll we're not even trolls anymore we're bullies but i'm glad they're at least acknowledging that we actually view the content like like apparently the the fans do we're not fans though we're not fans we're we're bullies anyway so so yeah like i said we're not bullies anymore we're trolls or we're not trolls anymore we're bullies so so there you go you can you can chew on that all you want a vocal contingent of viewers have created an environment that keeps creators from being able to make their art the way they want to make it that is not true uh, I will tell I, I said this on my live stream the other night on my channel but I don't have a problem with some of the with most of the creative decisions that, that they've been making in this season of Game of Thrones up to this point most of the issues I have with it is the execution. The execution of this season is incredibly weak. The writing is incredibly weak. And it's it it's the it's it's not even the decisions that they're making, and some of some of it is because some of it is just purely for shock value and stuff in this show, and I don't like that because it feels really uh it feel you can feel that it's very contrived and stuff. Like I said, I I don't have a problem with with people taking cr creative liberties to do what they want to do with the story, but it still has to be well written to get to that point, and it hasn't been well written for the most part in this season. Um, let's be clear: if you want a different story, tell your your damn own. Don't incessantly tweet at the creators that they didn't do it right. Well, if that's the case, then shouldn't all movie critics go out and make their own movies instead of being movie critics? Is that what you're saying? 
That's, that's pretty much what you're saying here. Whatever they do is right because it is theirs. Yes, they should want to please fans, and yes, they should feel grateful to have us, but most importantly, they should have freedom of creation. And nobody's saying that they can't have freedom of creation. Nobody's saying that. Literally, nobody is saying that they can't tell the story that they want to create. But we, as the fans, have the right to share our voices in response to what they're giving us. Basically, this person, I don't even know who wrote this article, who... Uh, Roxy, Roxy Stryer. Apparently, Roxy thinks that you shouldn't be able to voice your opinion. You should just go with whatever the people give you. You should basically just let them force feed it to you and not come back at them with any sort of critical thought. You can't share your opinions. You cannot be honest with what you think. That's basically what Roxy is saying here in this entire uh, paragraph right here. Um, let's see. Let's talk specifics. People are mad because Daenerys seemingly turned crazy overnight. When you really look at it, though, she's been acting this way all season. And I didn't, I, for the most part, I don't, don't really have a problem with what they've been doing with Daenerys. Um, let's see. But, you know, we're not going to really go into all these specifics. But that's that's kind of the, the overall uh, gist of the article is that if you have any critical thoughts about this season, then you are a bully. You are a troll. You are a sexist. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. Um, let's see here. Before you refer to Game of Thrones as sexist, need I remind you that this is the show that knighted Brienne of Tarth, the show that had Arya take down the Night King, that had Daenerys walk through fire, that had Sansa's... So, I... Yeah, let's see here. That being said... Uh... Maybe you don't want to see Danny's heel turn, but tough it happened. Not because the creators are sexist, not because they want to attack you personally, not because they don't care about the show, but because it is the story they want to tell. Like I said, I don't really have a problem with that, but if you're going to get to that point in the story, you have to do it in a way that actually makes sense for the story. You have to still have the writing where you get from point A to point B. You still have to have the story between that make sense and actually be well written. You know, You can't just... You can't just slap point B onto the end of point A and, exp and say that that's good storytelling. That is not good storytelling. You still have to take the process to get to that point. And so far, the the point between point A and point B during season 8 has not done a very good job with that. That is what we're saying. But yeah, apparently we're bullies. We're trolls when we say that. And it's, and uh, we, we don't have the, the right to share our opinion. That's pretty much what Aroxy is saying here, and that just kind of falls into the the general overall uh, the overall opinion of what uh, of what the f people on the far left side of the the spectrum believe. They don't want you to share your voice. They don't want you to share your opinion. That's what SJWs believe through and through. They think that you should just follow along with whatever narrative is being forced on the rest of us, and you shouldn't be you shouldn't have any critical thoughts about that at all. Um, anyway, th uh, I, I found this article from, I believe it was Christian Harloff. Uh, let me see here. I'm, I'm kind of curious now. I, I believe it was Christian, Christian Harloff here that I found this article from. And, uh, it's just kind of, kind of crazy. Uh, maybe, maybe it wasn't Christian Harloff. Uh, let me see. Oh uh, yeah, it was actually. He says this 1000 times this. Can I say I'm proud of you? So, Christian Harloff apparently is falling right into the SJW agenda and all of that stuff as well. As is pretty much everyone who's working at Collider at this point. And it's just pretty insane. It's pretty insane. They're just jumping right to the deep end with uh, the SJW identity politics and all of that stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts on this article. Christian Harloff, this is not a good thing to be promoting because this is damaging to to the fan bases to fa all fan bases really and it's not going to be helpful to writers in the long run because we are the ones that are supposed to be keeping the writers accountable to telling good stories if we don't give our critical thoughts about the writing and in, in a show or movies or whatever then it's just going to continue to be crap they're just going to put out whatever they want and uh, they're not going to care about what kind of feedback they get Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then consider subscribing to the channel, and I will talk to you all very soon in another video. Talk to you later. Bye.